Using tracking alone, you may be limited to 15, 30, 45 seconds. Depends on the setup. Auto guiding is the way forward for getting longer exposure lengths and pulling out more detail. And auto guiding isn't that an expensive upgrade. Um, if buying new gear, a real popular setup would only set you back maybe £200 or so. I recently stepped into the world of auto guiding and I paid under 90 and I'll show you that momentarily. I'm Nugsy and this is Cheap Astro. So let's firstly look at this uh, approximately £200 setup. Uh, you're going to need two things for auto guiding. That is a guide camera, which is quite often just a planetary camera, and a guide scope. And the scopes aren't that expensive. For the guide camera, one of the most popular that I see used is a ZWO ASI 120 mini guide camera. It's a mono camera and the cheapest I see it coming in is just over £150 new. ZWO or ZWO also do a mini finder scope. That comes in at about £100. However, I see also that SV Boney do almost the same scope for only £51. Converters necessary for euros and dollars. So a well-renowned mini mono guide cam and a mini guide scope, that'll set you back just over £200. The mono camera is most recommended over a colour planetary camera, but I chose to go with a colour planetary camera because I also wanted a colour planetary camera. And I can use it as the planetary camera when I need to and switch it up and use it as a guide camera when I need to do that. So I'm killing two birds with one stone. Now the camera I bought was from SV Boney and it's the SV305 and I kind of feel guilty saying this but I picked it up for £55. It's currently on Amazon at 133 The SV105, their cheapest camera, a beginner camera, is more expensive than the 305 I bought. To pick that up for the price I got it, you're now looking at the used market. Now the question is, can you use these cheaper SV Boney cameras as guiding cameras? The SV105 and SV205. Some say that you can, but many say that you can't. <laughs> so, um, I, I've been looking into it and the bottom line is the SV105 has a maximum exposure length of only half a second whereas the 205 has a maximum exposure length of one second. When I set my 305 up in PhD2 which is the guiding program the default was I think two seconds maybe two and a half I don't recall. So neither of these give enough exposure length. However, if coupled with a larger aperture on your guide scope, a fairly fast scope, you may get away with it, but getting away with it is what you'd be doing. So I'd still recommend not really going for those cheaper ones, but instead, if you're looking to save money, looking for the used market. Other manufacturers do these guide cams as well. I've seen some from QHY coming up on eBay for under £100, so do your research and shop well if you want to save money on this one, rather than buying cheap, because if you buy too cheap, you may buy twice. The SV305, totally different from the 105 and 205. It has a well-renowned IMX290 sensor, and it has a maximum exposure stated as 30, 30 minutes, sorry, yeah. I've not looked into that, but 
it certainly has no trouble with two, three, four, five seconds, whatever you need for guiding wherever you are. In most cases, a guide camera is going to start at £150 and just go up from there, to be honest. So I still think, even at today's £133 price for the SV305, it's a good bargain. It's a bit cheaper than the ZWO option, and it can double up as a planetary camera, if you don't already have a planetary camera. And I think it does a pretty good job. I've only got a few images out of it so far because I seldom get clear nights. Of those clear nights, very few are of good seeing. But the bottom line is, I'm chuffed with my purchase. I think it's a great camera and it has not failed me on guiding. So when it comes to guide scopes, I have personally used my finder scope. It's the Skywatcher 9x50 finder scope and I'm going to go into how I set that up after just explaining a little bit about these scopes they're not that expensive the cheapest one i've seen is only 51 pounds and that's from sv boney it's a mini guide scope 30 mil aperture that certainly won't work with a 105 or 205 you're gonna need a better sensor for that and um, yeah, they just go up from there, but there's a good range around the hundred pounds mark. Again, you know, me being me, I would always recommend the used market. So my setup, as I said, this bargain SV305, coupled with the Skywatcher 9x50 finder scope. How this is put together is by way of an adapter. It does not just fit onto the finder scope. What we need to do is to unscrew the back end of the finder scope in its entirety and replace that with an adapter which I found available from First Light Optics. It's an Astro Essentials 9x50 to C mount adapter. This actually cost £30 which is hellish expensive for the little piece that it is in my opinion. But it saved me spending fifty pounds on a fifty pounds or more on a guide scope. If you have a three D printer, or if you have access to somebody with a three D printer, there are files available on Thingiverse that allow you to print your own adapter of this nature, or one that you can put eyepieces into as well. So you know any other guide cam without the C mount would also fit in there. I believe there's one of these available for the Skywatcher 6x30 finder scope as well. So once this adapter is screwed into place, the camera literally just screws straight onto it. There is a little spanner type thing that comes with the adapter, but the camera will screw it in tighter anyway as you screw that in. And that is basically the setup, it's a guide scope and camera almost ready to use it just needs mounting however there is one issue with this setup and that is achieving focus now the focus ring on the 9x50 skywatcher finder scope needs removing so we take off the lens element totally remove that focus lock ring and screw back on the lens element and that allows the lens element to screw on a bit further and this can then be taped down however I was doing that but in practice it's a bit of a pain in the ass because it still does need refocusing in different temperatures so I got rid of the tape and I went back to that focus ring and I cut it in half with a hacksaw very awkwardly and time consumingly but I managed to cut it file off the burrs and with only half the width of the thread on there put it back on and now it will reach focus and I have a locking ring with my setup I I'm using a DSLR as some of you would have seen before on my channel and I use that with lenses I've got a, a 135mm and a 300mm lens 
and I use it with my main telescope, a 200mm 8 inch f5 Newtonian. And I wanted this guide scope to be quickly interchangeable between the scope and each of my lenses. And I came up with all sorts of weird bracketry and different ways of doing it and hanging it on this side for balance and that side for... Anyway, long story short, I changed it all. And the setup I've gone with now is just to put the finder scope with camera directly onto a dovetail bar. This is a spare dovetail bar I picked up for only a tenner and it'll sit on the opposite side of the tube rings from my initial dovetail bar. So then I've got the guide scope up on top of the main scope and the focuser and camera hangs underneath it so it aids balance a bit better. In order to actually attach this lot to the dovetail bar I'm using pipe clamp rings. They're cheap things from Amazon and they're for like drain pipes and things like that but I find they work a treat. I've previously made some uh, like clamp rings for my DSLR lenses with these I've shown in another video. So what I've done here is I've actually turned the clamp rings upside down so that the captive nut is on the upper side and I've drilled through the center allowing the guide scope to be mounted nice and close to that dovetail bar lowering the center of gravity you know. Then once these are all attached there's another bar I've put across the top this is just a bit of scrap aluminium I found lying around and up through that I have another mounting bolt onto which I can attach my DSLR lenses. So I could simply just remove the dovetail bar from my main scope, put that into the saddle of my EQ5 and then mount either of my lenses onto the top of my guide scope. Now this is unconventional, everyone has a guide scope on top, imaging rig below. And I hadn't heard of this done before now, but as it was an option I'd conceived of, I googled it and apparently some people have done it and see no problem with it. I see no problem with it. So that's what I went with. A quick interchangeable guide scope setup that I can use on my lenses and scope and it's just easily done, much better than buying three sets of guide and equipment and that's about all I can say on this one there is a lot more to guiding I'm, I'm not intending to do a tutorial on how to guide this is just literally the hardware what you need and how to set it up so I hope this has been of some help to someone somewhere and I wish you all the best in finding bargains out there clear skies everyone I'm Nugsy, this is Cheap Astro.